Here to introduce Scott to be inducted into the CU Hall of Fame is his former teammate, Bob Hoffman. I wanted this opportunity to, to introduce Scott because he's the most self-deprecating person I've ever met. And I did a little walk around CU yesterday. And right up on Northern Library, there's a, a phrase that I never forgot. It says, now here's what it's used to say, he who knows only their own generation remains always a child. Now it just says who, you know, it doesn't say he because it's different now. But anyway, it was, it was really good walking through. And also I wanted to mention one other person that died tragically in, in uh, 2013. And we named a statue after him and it's still there at the student center where the fountain is, and that's Cliff Mealy. And he's one of the great players that, that Scott and I ever got to play against. And I, and I did want to mention him. Anybody who sees that statue, it's kind of an abstract, but it looks like Cliff Mealy's jump shot. And Harold Fielden mentioned that to me a long time ago, and we've called it that ever since. So that's for, for Cliff. And for Scotty, uh, things you don't know about the guy is that he, He's probably the most underrated NBA player ever, and that's according to Court Reynolds, who's a writer for the Boston Globe. He averaged 25.7 points per game in a playoff series in 1981 against, um, that was Portland. They won three games, got the NBA Finals against Houston, and Scotty averaged 19 points a game playing big guard, not forward, which he never did in Boston, and if he had a points per minute, Scotty's NBA record in 19, for instance, in 1984, he made 11 straight shots in an NBA final game, which is the first game against the Lakers in the 1984-85 series. The year before that, he averaged, uh, he hit the game-winning shot against the Lakers when they won in 1983-84. Uh, so he has so many accomplishments that, that are so unbelievable that he never talks about. And even at CU, we were in a weird era. I call it the tartan era. Because from 70 to 74, we played on a tartan surface that's still up in the field house. And it probably wrecked more legs than any surface that ever could erect. And uh, Scotty played on teams that had more injuries, or he would have been a lot more recognized and our teams would have been a lot better. And I, I wanted to be able to bring that up. He. Uh, Played in 75 games, averaged 20 points a game a senior year, scored over 11,000 points in the NBA, had just a, a career that's unbelievable. He had one year he averaged more points per minute than Larry Bird when Larry Bird was an NBA All-Star or Player of the Year. So that's some things people don't know about Scotty, and uh, I, I wanted to mention it. We both had a great experience, and I, and I have thank Chief Prentup so much. He used to tell me I couldn't pour piss out of a boot with directions on the heel every time I tried to not jump rope, had to skip rope with him and learn and punch the bag. And, and Duke, I just want you to know, he also taught me how to blow a whistle with a sharp staccato blast because like you said, his rules were, were unbelievable. He had a great effect on, on both of our lives and I think he really helped Scotty become the NBA player that he became. And uh, anyway, it's kind of symmetric. I'm a basketball coach at Fort Lewis College now, and we play CU coming up. And nobody has had more of an effect. Of course, we got to play for Sox Walsh, and I do hold two records that nobody probably knows about. The first one is I held Lonnie Kruger to 37 points twice in 1973 in the Big A championship game. And, and the other is that Sox one time told me, he said, he said, get in, Bobby, for, for uh, Lee Haven. So I went in for Lee Haven. Then the buzzer rang, and it was right after a free throw was made, and I came back out. And Sox looked at me and said, Bobby, you look like you need a blow. And I hadn't played zero seconds. <laughs> so I have that record as well, playing the least time in a substitution. But it, it was great playing for Sox. He once told me when I, this is just, this is not for Scotty really, but I have to mention this about Sox, because everybody here has probably heard Sox in the old days. And, he came up to me, he's the best, he, he came up to me, and I was just interviewing for the Fairview High School basketball job in 1977. And I thought I had the job. I mean, I, I'm from Boulder, I played ball. So anyway, Sox comes up to me, sees me at the grocery store, and he says, says hey Bobby, I hear you're up for the, the CU job, or excuse me, the, I, tr I tried that in 1990, right Bill? And he, he said, uh, in, in 1977, he says, he says Bobby, no reason to be optimistic, but I hope you get the job. <laughs>
which if you know socks, that's about as typical as it gets. But, you know, anyway, I'm kind of random abstract, but I did want to mention all those things about Scotty that he wouldn't say about himself. Uh, I was with Scott as a roommate when he, when he met Kim, his lovely wife, in 1972. And Scotty was so far ahead of his time that I think it hurt him. Nobody is more insightful about basketball than Scott Webman. He was a great coach. He is such a great coach that his team made him change his name of his team. This is a group of high school kids. Made him change the name of his team from the Pumas to the Wedmans. That's how much they respected Scott. They wanted to make sure that team was named after him. And that's just players doing that. And he's done so many things. He is so unbelievably insightful about the game of basketball. And the thread that I've had as a coach in the same time he's been coaching has been just remarkable. I've coached since 1974 and Sox has coached. And then I watched Scotty play. Then when he got done, nobody can watch a person shoot and tell them what they did better. I had him, he came to coach with my team so many times. He's just the most unbelievable basketball person I've ever known. And, and I kind of insisted, thanks to George and a few other people. George played for me in 1981. It's kind of weird after being his coach, seeing his name behind me, but that's, that, that goes okay too. And uh, but anyway, I wanted to introduce Scott, and I apologize for taking any more time, but he's like what the best, in my opinion, as good a player as CU's ever had, along with, with Cliff Mealy. Well, I was uh, hoping to have at least 30 seconds after Bobby spoke, and I think it's down to about 10 seconds. So this is going to be fast. Oh, thank you. First of all, Univers University of Colorado, thank you. What a great honor, not only to notice what we did and that it mattered and to honor it for us. All of us as inductees, this is really an honor to be here tonight. Thank you so much. When I first arrived in Boulder in 1970, went to the game. At that time, freshmen could not play on the varsity. They had Cliff Mealy, Jimmy Creighton, uh, Bobby Hoffman, Tommy Kennedy, Lee Haven. They had some great players, and I thought, there is no way I'm going to be able to survive. I, I didn't know if I'd ever get any playing time. But CU had some great coaches. Sox Walseth was unbelievable. He had some great assistants, Charlie Gardner, Gary Holst, Session Harlan, and four years later, I was drafted in the first round of the NBA. Sox I, is no longer with us, but I believe Joey, Cindy, Nikki, you're here tonight. Your father was a great man. He did so much for all of us, and we had, we had a great time. <clears throat> Not only did I find a home here in Boulder for four years, I also, met, I also met my future wife, Kim, the love of my life. I also earned a degree in business, in real estate, which serves me to this day. I'm in the real estate business in Kansas City. Thank you, University of Colorado, for not only a great athletic career, but an education. <clears throat> I would like to back up a little bit now, because Really, when I got to Colorado, I was a product of my parents. And growing up in Littleton, I attended Mullen High School. And my mom and dad raised all four of us kids. And they, they just raised us in, in an atmosphere that allowed all four of us to excel. I'll never forget the first time. Um, my parents didn't really talk a lot. They just provided a lot of examples. One time, my mom and I were walking home from school. I don't know if you remember this, Mom. We ran across a couple kids, and some older kids were picking on some little kid. Do you remember that? Well, what she said is, is one, one sentence. She said, Scott, I hope you never grow up to be like that. Never forgot it. I think to this day, that's why I enjoy coaching kids so much. My dad was uh, also, he didn't talk a whole lot. I'll never forget today. My brother, Mike, signed a letter of intent. Don Myers came down. I think Don's here tonight somewhere. Don came down and my brother um, signed a, got a full ride to come to Colorado and pole vault, be on the track team. And I'll never forget, and I, actually I wanted to ask dad this question. So after Don left, 
you went into the kitchen and you said something to mom, did you know that I was in the living room listening when you said to mom, well, we got Mike's college education taken care of, now we have to worry about Scott. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> he did. I think he knew exactly where I was. Um, <clears throat> my brother Mike, as I mentioned, was an awesome athlete. He could run faster than I could. He could jump higher. The only thing he couldn't do, my uncle Wes, I believe, will attest. One time when I was like five or six years old, he was teasing me a little bit. And he took off running. I couldn't catch him. So I bent over, picked up a rock off the ground, and threw it. Hit him right square in the back of the head, according to Uncle Wes. I think that was the first time anybody noticed that I might have pretty good hand-eye coordination. <laughs> but Mike was unbelievable. <clears throat> I really learned to compete from him. I would go to track meets, and he would pole vault. I'd catch his pole, and I was always amazed by his concentration, his intensity. He came to Colorado, became an All-American in the pole vault, in the decathlon, and I learned a lot from him. He was, he was a big part of my development. And not only was he a great athlete, he also opened my eyes to a lot of other things. He talked to me about being a vegetarian, getting into yoga, a lot of different things that I'd never even thought of and things that basically taught me how to maximize my potential. So thank you, Mike, for that. You were a great, a great, a great asset to my development. I have a couple of uh, lifelong friends I'd like to mention. Is it Dave Kennedy in the house? Okay, Dave's brother Tom, I thought Dave might be here. Tom Kennedy was not able to be here tonight, played on the team with us. He's, um, sorry, he, I'm sorry he couldn't be here. He has having some health conditions, so our uh, thoughts go out to him. Um, Steve Stander, where's Steve? Steve's in the house. I love you, Steve. Thanks for keeping it real all these years from the University of Colorado, still lifelong friends. Now, I want to know, is there any Mullen High School grads in the house? I know there's, we got Joe there, Kurt, got a few guys, Jimmy Ryan. So, I got to tell you a story about this guy, Jimmy Ryan. He came to Mullen High School when we were sophomores in high school. And being from the south side of Chicago, he taught us a lot of things. We learned a lot of things fast. He kind of rocked our world down at Mullen High School. So, one of the things he did, he had this cheer he brought from the south side of Chicago. I'm gonna need a little help out here from my Mullen grads. Joe, you ready out there? All right, and I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually transfer. It's not gonna be the Mustangs tonight, it's gonna be the Buffs. Are you guys with me? All right. And you guys, crowds, you can, you can join in. The chorus is, yeah, man. That's all you have to say. Are you with me? Okay. Okay. Here we go. I went down to the river. I started to drown. I started thinking about the buffaloes. I couldn't go down. I went down to the station. I put my head on the track. I started thinking about the buffaloes. I pulled my head back. <laughs> Thank you, University of Colorado. It's been a great career. Thank you so much.